I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we're gonna dye some wool roving. I want to kettle dye this roving in two layers which likely will give us some variation in the color uh, and I think it'll be really fun because I love creating layered tonals like that on yarn but I don't think I've done that exactly on roving. Now there's some challenges that I have with this technique that I'll chat about along the way. But first I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Robin. Robin, thank you so much for being my lab partner today. The fiber we're using today is Wool of the Andes Roving. This is 100% Peruvian Highland wool and I'm untying my knots. I'm planning to add it to our dye bath dry and we're gonna dye 300 grams at once. Now, kettle dyeing roving, when you have it in the pot, how do I remove it without felting it? And I have a little bit of a solution of what I plan to do, so we'll talk about that in a moment. But now, let's go look at our dye colors. I put on my safety gear, a deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves before opening up the dry dye powders. I wanted to go for a little bit of a dusty pink in the end today. So I pulled up my color mixing using Cherry Bomb and True Black and decided I really liked the color that was 0.25% depth of shade of each of the two colors. So since I'm gonna dye 300 grams of fiber, I measured out 0.75 grams of True Black and Cherry Bomb and dissolved each of them with some hot tap water, not worrying about the total volume because we're gonna use all the dye on our fiber in the end anyway. There are a few different ways we could go about this, but once I add roving into a warm dye bath, I don't wanna stir because I don't want to felt it. I don't wanna agitate it very much. So here we have a hot dye bath with my pasta insert in here. And so if I add all the fiber into the pasta insert, then I can remove the insert and remove the yarn to change the color and then hopefully that will be agitating the fiber a little bit less. And I don't know how much water is in here. It's enough water. I filled it up as much as I thought I could while still um, not overdoing it. Because if I added too much water volume, then it could overflow and that would not be good. I'm rinsing out the cup. There's still a little bit of dye in there. All right, there we go. Now I'm choosing to add our fiber to the dye bath dry today, which may be a mistake, we will see. But I do want to bring in some acid. I don't know how much dye is in here, but let's go ahead and do one, two, three, four, five, six tablespoons of white vinegar. Hopefully adding the fiber won't bring the level up too much. I'm a little nervous. I folded all the strips of roving in half and I'm slowly, the goal isn't to have something dip dyed, but I'm slowly adding it. It might have some more color strike on one side than the other, but since this roving is not super wash, things do strike a little bit slower overall but we are gonna be able to get some, in theory, amount of black all over, which you can see, because otherwise the sort of inside of where the yarn is has less access to the liquid than the rest. But oh, that went in pretty easily. And there may still be some dry patches, but that's okay. And you can see some edges around the outside are likely gonna be darker than what is on the inside, but we wanted tonal variation. So that's all really good. <laughs> now, I don't want to be at a boil. I don't want things to simmer too, too much. So right now we can see we have a fair amount of color that is left. There will be differences between each of our hanks of roving. What would you call it? <laughs> uh, but we're gonna be patient and wait. And I think I'm gonna set a timer for 20 minutes. And then we'll come back 
I don't often cover things, but since I he have the heat on low, I want to trap as much of the heat in here as I can. And so that's where the lid comes into play. It's been 20 minutes and let's see how we're doing. Okay, there's very little color left. It is okay if some color is left because we're gonna be layering on a whole other color anyway. So now what I wanna do is carefully remove this from the dye pot and we're gonna drain as much of the liquid as we can. And I am gonna let, I think, the fiber cool off a little bit before we do the next layer. Because some color is in our fiber. Even if, now that I'm looking at our dye bath, there is still a fair amount of black in there. Here, I'm gonna set this uh, aside. I have it inside. You can kind of see a <laughs> steam pan right there. We have a fair amount of pigment in here still, but that's okay, that's not gonna, distract from our layering because we do have some lovely tonal variation on our fiber already. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to add our red. I'm also ready at this stage to increase the amount of acid. Let's add two, three, four, five, six tablespoons of white vinegar. Uh, and I'm not gonna bother stirring it because once we add the insert back in, that will stir it for us. But I'm gonna let the fiber cool just for a little bit so that way I can sort of lift it out and we can try to add it slowly back into the dye bath so we can get some amount of coverage all over. But in the meantime, I will increase the heat that we have just so that way we can heat everything up that we have in here. But color-wise, you can see it is predominantly red now versus black. That little bit of black left isn't a huge deal. It's been about 20 minutes and, okay, it's still a little warm. Let me try to just sort of dump that in here a little bit. I'm gonna put the insert back in the pot. Funny, you can always see the shape of some of those holes. Okay, we are quite warm. I just want to spread it out a little bit so that way things aren't gonna go back in the exact same way that they did before. I should probably try to let this cool more, but let's just kind of go for it. I'm trying to go a little slow. Where is my little fish turner inserting that in okay oh, I want to reduce the heat to low this is so nerve-wracking and Indy is barking outside oh my goodness but you can see already that we have some stunning tonal variation in here uh, you can see areas that are more pink, that are more deep. And so, yeah, I guess I plan to let this go for 30 minutes. And then as needed, we can always come back and add more acid. I can remove this, add acid and stir and put it back in. And we'll see where we end up. Uh, actually, instead of 30 minutes, let's wait 45. No harm in that. It's been 45 minutes, and I suppose I could heat it a little bit more. <laughs> I've had the heat on super low. There isn't a ton of color left, but if I move the fiber aside, you can see, well, you can't see. There are reds there. So I think what I wanna do is we're just gonna briefly remove this. Look at those colors. Oh, that's so pretty. Ooh, we've got some like reds and a little bit of some pinks in there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do one, two big splashes of white vinegar. We may not absorb all of the color, but I'd like to, to do as much as we can. Haha, -ha, that actually worked well. And we have a little bit more liquid. We 
which I'm gonna pour in from this pan where I sat it. Okay, and I'm gonna give this, I think, another 30 minutes. The heat's a little higher, but I'm gonna be working on a project over there anyway, and so we'll see uh, if it starts to get too much agitation and then I can adjust it. But I'm setting the timer for 30 minutes. The 30 minutes are up, and some of that bubbling sound you hear is another project that I have going on behind us. Now, at one point, I did start to see it boil over, I have a feeling all the fiber sort of raised up to the surface. There's maybe going to be a hint of some color left. And we have a fair amount of reds left. If I pull that aside, you can see. I mean, it's nothing compared to where we started. But I'm going to turn the heat off. And I'm going to leave the fiber here in the pot to cool off slowly over the next couple of hours. Eventually, I will remove it probably before it's been cooled completely cooled, but while I'm working on other projects, we may as well just leave it in the pot, let it cool off slowly, maybe it'll absorb a little more color. This almost looks like cranberry sauce. It's been a couple of hours. Oh my gosh, those colors are so pretty. Oh, it looks maroon near the outside. I'm trying to drain out as much of that water as I can. I'm gonna set the fiber aside, but the good news is there's pretty much no color left here in the dye pot, but there's definitely some warmth left here. So I'm going to go ahead and let the fiber, which is right back here, cool off completely before we go and try to wash it. While washing the pot, it occurred to me I can use this whole setup to wash the fiber <laughs> rather than removing it. Uh, it was just some soapy water that had cooled, and the fiber had cooled. But rather than taking the fiber out, hopefully I can do this with minimal agitation. Hey, hey, we don't have any color bleeding. That's awesome, although when I'm realizing I want to not make a mess, should have the secondary container I was using over here to pop this into while I change the water. Wahoo! That's exciting. <laughs> Just trying to not make the floor of my kitchen super wet. Oh, this is so fun. <laughs> and everything's getting cleaned all at once. Oh, this is great. Oh, this is so good. Of course, the 300 grams of fiber are completely intertwined. So transferring them to the spin dryer is going to be interesting. Uh, but I will let this drain a little bit and then come back to you. Okay, I have drained it. Okay. Going to lift it and pop it into here and oh my goodness is this beautiful okay i'm trying to be gentle but also i'm hoping to separate the three pieces from one another there we go that should aid me when we go into the spin dryer but this is gorgeous, 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 gorgeous fiber. I'm gonna put this through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and then, well, we'll take a closer look at the fiber. The variation of color that we got in here is absolutely incredible. And we didn't have to do any real like space dyeing technique. I'm just fluffing this up to show that the fiber is a little compressed, but it is not felted. It is easy to like, fluff and separate and it'll be really easy to spin. <sighs> but we have some pastel areas, but most of it has a lot of saturation, but we can see so much of the combination of our grays. Uh, I wouldn't say there's very much black, but the grays and sort of this rich burgundy color we got from the red and the red and the grays and the way that they combined. But ugh. 
this is just so pretty and look you can even see some modeling in here from like the pasta insert <laughs> that'll blend out when it's spun but anyway I'm gonna start to crochet this up and then I will fluff the other 200 gram Hanks fiber here we are and all nice and fluffed <laughs> you can see some striping here uh, from where we had those holes uh, in our pasta insert. So it does contribute a little bit because if the fiber is pressed up against the sides, you're not gonna get pigment in some of the area behind the metal, but you'll absorb dye that's around the outside with the fiber that's exposed. And so that's what gives those banded and more modeled patterns. Could we have dyed this without the pasta insert? Absolutely. The pasta insert just gave me an easy way to remove all the fiber from the dye bath without using tongs or something. I think that it resulted in slightly less agitation, maybe, but I also probably could have tried to grab all the fiber with tongs and remove it that way. Uh, gosh, I'm now thinking about things because we got so much variation in here that I'm, the one perk of doing things this way is that I didn't dry the fiber in between. Because if I was going to braid it, dye it, and then unbraid it and dye it, we could get some effects that are similar to what we had here in terms of some of the randomness, but I don't like to braid the wet fiber, I like to have it dry. So that's just, I guess, something to consider as I'm planning this out. There's so much more variation though than what I expected. I think if I had dyed just 100 grams of roving in one pot, I would have been able to get more coverage, uh, less sort of uneven coverage onto the yarn. The more fiber you have in there, the more it's sort of compressed as a ball. And so you're gonna get the most color around the outside versus kind of moving to the interior. Gosh, these are all things to really think about. I really need to try, and I'm saying this now so that my editing Rebecca will write it down, I need to try immersion dyeing roving in my steam pan and then dyeing it with one color and then flip it over and dye the other side with another color. Because the color never goes all the way through, but I think that that would give a really pretty effect. And I think that having more surface area would help with the color coverage. And so doing the immersion dyeing in a steam pan versus a kettle might help get more coverage. But ultimately it doesn't matter because I love what we ended up with here today. Robin, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I really hope that you have enjoyed this simple dyeing project, but stunning variegated roving that we got out of it. And I really hope that you're going to enjoy spinning with it. If you would like to learn more how you can become a lab partner like Robin, go and check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. There are options for me to dye fiber, but also different weights of yarn. If there's a particular yarn or fiber base you're interested in me dyeing, reach out to me on Etsy messages ahead of time so we can check and see what I may have in inventory. But I love an excuse to play around with the yarn bases you most want to see me dye. So it's a lot of fun. And Robin, thank you again. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I need to do more spinning. And I've been saying this for ages, but I do have, at least on my little calendar, and who knows if I've done this before this video has come out or not, but I have on my calendar times for me to go and locate all the bobbins that I have that are full to remove the yarn from them, or maybe we'll do that in a live stream to just ply and finish up yarn that I've already spun. But yeah, get things ready so I can spin some of the lovely things that I have on hand. Both things that I've dyed and things that say I've received as Paradise Fibers uh, PR or whatnot. Make sure you're subscribed and turn on the notifications so you never miss any of it. Uh, sometimes I schedule live streams a few days in advance, but sometimes I go live within you know, 30 minutes or an hour of scheduling the live stream. And so if your notifications are on, you're most likely to find out when I'm live so you can interact with me in real time, which is a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching.